In this video, do the integral from 1 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared all over x dx. So what substitution should we use? So we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, trig identity. So multiplying with this by 4, you get 4 minus 4 sine squared theta equals 4 cosine squared theta. So now let's take the positive square root on both sides, leaving us with the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta equals the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of cosine squared theta we'll assume is cosine theta. Okay. And now we're going to let this be x squared. So we're going to let x squared be 4 sine squared theta. Now taking the positive square root, we get x equals 2 sine theta. Okay. That means that dx will be 2 cosine theta d theta. I won't forget that again. Okay, so now let's rewrite this in terms of theta. So we get the integral. I'm going to change the bounds in a little bit. So we have the square root of, as we said, this will just be square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. Okay, all over x, which is 2 sine theta. Okay, and then we're going to have 2 cosine theta d theta. And as I said before, this will be turned into 2 cosine theta, as I just showed. So this will be 2 cosine theta. The 2 and the 2 will cancel. Cosine and cosine will combine to be, so we have the integral of 2 cosine squared theta all over sine theta d theta. Okay, so what bounds should we have? So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to rewrite for this one, but not the other one. Okay, so when x equals 1, what happens to theta? So that will be 1 equals, using this equation, 1 equals 2 sine theta. That means that sine theta equals 1 half. And the main angle that does that is theta is pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Okay, so theta will start at pi over 6. At x equals 2, you'll get 2 equals 2 sine theta. Dividing by 2, obviously sine theta equals 1. And the angle that does this is theta equals 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. And we work in radians, so we're going to do it like this. Okay, so what's next? So we're going to rewrite this as pi, integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2. On the bottom we have sine theta and then d theta. Okay, 2 cosine squared theta is 2 times 1 minus sine squared theta or 2 minus 2 sine squared theta, right? Now we're going to separate these. So this will be the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of 2 over sine theta, which is 1 over sine theta, which is cosecant theta times 2, which is 2 cosecant theta. d theta, close that integral, minus another integral, the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay, so we have 2 sine squared theta over sine theta. We'll just cancel one of the powers, so this will just be sine theta, d theta. Okay. And the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta, but the integral of sine theta is negative cosine theta. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2 of 2 cosecant theta d theta. So sine theta, integral of sine theta is negative cosine, cosine theta. So this will be plus 2 cosine theta, plugging in from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay, so what is the integral of cosecant theta. So the integral of cosecant theta, d theta, will be negative natural log absolute value of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. It looks similar to the integral of secant theta, d theta, which is ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. And then you could add c if you want to, but we're not going to do it yet. And we're not going to do it because we have number, we have bounds to put in. So this will be negative 2 ln absolute value of cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plugging in from pi over 6 to pi over 2 plus 2 cosine theta plugging in from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay. So for this one, cosi cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so we can cancel that out, which means we're only going to have the, the lower bound, which means we plug in pi over 6 into cosine. Cosine of pi over 6 
is square root of 3 over 2. But that would cancel, leaving us with just square root of 3. So we have minus 2 cosine of pi over 6, which is just square root of 3. Okay. So now let's plug in pi over 2 into both of those. So sine of pi over 2 is 1, and cotangent of pi over 2, well, that would be cosine of pi over 2 over sine of pi over 2, which is 1, which is 0. Okay, so this actually turns to 0 because in here you have uh, 1 plus 0 in the natural log, which is ln of 1, which is 0. So that goes away. So we're only going to have the lower bound again, so that means we have to multiply by a negative, so that would be 2 ln absolute value of cosecant pi over 6 plus cotangent pi over 6 and then minus square root of 3. Okay. Sine of pi over 6, that's sine of 30, that'd be 1 half. And cosine of pi over 6, that's cosine of 30, which is square root of 3 over 2. Okay. So this will be 2 ln absolute value. Okay. Cosecant of pi over 6. So sine of pi over 6, as we know, is 1 half. So that would be the flipped version, so that'd be 2. Plus this cotangent of pi over 6. So let's just write cotangent of pi over 6 is cosine of pi over 6 over sine pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. The 1 halves will cancel, leaving us with just square root of 3. So this would be 2 ln absolute value of 2 plus square root of 3. Okay. And that is positive under the ln, so we can actually just get rid of the absolute value. So that would be 2 ln of 2 plus square root of 3 minus square root of 3. And that is the answer to this question, and that's the end of the video. Hope you liked it.